It says, you're live. I'm taking that to mean we're live. Hey, happy Friday. Happy Pi Day Friday. No, oh, no. <laughs> it caught me itching my nose. <laughs> Sorry, I'm seeing things on delay. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> there we go. <laughs> so voices vastly improving. It is not, however, done. So apologies for any roughness, but uh, we're going to get through the day, <clears throat> he said. I was just making a run for cough drops. I know how much fun it is for you to listen to me while I have cough drops in my face, but it's that or no show or something along the lines like that. Hey, well, good afternoon. It is Friday. It's uh, good Lord. We're starting about the last week or so of uh, last full week of January, already chewing our way through 2022. I don't know about you. Um, I don't think I've actually physically used a pen and written 2022 yet, but of course, you know, we live on keyboards and uh, I'm, I'm starting to get used to typing it, but I was just looking over some uh, documents that I had to, to update and make changes to. In fact, I, I was fixing the description on the uh, drama show today and I looked in the description and sure enough, it still said 2021. So <clears throat> there's things to catch up on at any rate. I am David Rush, or Dave, and I'm the senior instructor at Total Seminars, where we write books and make videos and lots and lots of other things, but those are the, the facing things that you know about us. No, we do, uh, yeah, I just do with that. This is an Ask Me Anything, and since I am Dave Rush, we call it drama. Dave Rush, Ask Me Anything, right? We do this every Friday and call it Friday Pie Day. I am not alone in my efforts. While I am the only person you see on camera here, there are uh, a team of thousands working to make this happen. First and foremost, uh, our erstwhile owner and president and uh, truly the senior instructor and so many more hats, uh, super, uh, senior author, <laughs> the author, uh, Mike Myers, and our gratitude to him for letting us use this resource to get together and talk about Raspberry Pis and CompTIA certifications and give away really cool things uh, and do so much more. <clears throat> Working in the back channel with me is my direct boss, the uh, senior editor of Total Seminars, author, co-author, and uh, when he's not doing those things, he is a, a deep sea shark fisherman. So if, if that's a hobby that you share in common with him, uh, drop him a note here at Scott Jernigan, and uh, he will be glad to talk about shark catching with you. And what, you know, I just learned that recently, and now I know why he doesn't call me Dave or co-worker. He calls me chum, so. <laughs> Come on, Scott, I just made that up. You better have me listening, because that was brilliant. <laughs> Uh, what else? So Scott's moderating the uh, the chat feed, answering questions. He's posting links, working in the back channel. Feel free to chat with him. And also working in the back channel is the latest addition to Total Seminars, Andrew Hutz, former uh, participant in these like everybody else. He would watch and post questions and things like that. And uh, we met him up uh, in here. We met him on the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. And uh, after some conversations and back channel communication, Andrew has joined us as uh, editor, writer, and also many other things, including back channel operator here. He's uh, helping do research for me. So when questions come up that he knows I'm not going to know the answer to, he's researching it and coming up with things. And he's posting links and doing so much more. Both Scott and Andrew have van hammers because we have been uh, inundated lately on Mike's show and to a lesser degree, but some degree uh, on drama by Russian spammers who are trying to post links they can't but they're they're doing fake links and, and things you can do that that lead to places no human should go i haven't been there but the others have and they said oh my gosh don't go there so if you see any russian oriented links or funny looking links don't go there if we're not posting them you don't want them Reading notes. So what are we doing here? We are here to advance our technical learning while isolated during the COVID epidemic crisis, pandemic crisis. Uh, and as you may be able to tell from my voice, uh, eh, I'm recovering. I, what is that? I got to get rid of that paragraph. I am mostly recovered from, I'm fully recovered from the Rona Club. I just have a, an old 
call it a throat injury that makes uh, things like flu and anything else that uh, makes your sinuses run or something like that. I, I, re, I heal much more slowly than the rest of the population. So when, if you're done with it in a week, I'm done with it in three months. <laughs> This is the 76th in a series of weekly dramas to show how we use Raspberry Pi as a study aid and in real world creations. It is a presentation of Total Seminars. We get together every Friday, two o'clock Central Time for a couple hours or so. Ask questions, propose topics. Uh, I'm open to any technical question. Doesn't have to be RasPi, doesn't have to be CompTIA oriented, though those are our ballywicks. We will certainly stretch above and beyond that as necessary. And as we can, no religion, no politics, no COVID for the most part. And uh, we will get along just fine. Every Monday and Wednesday, uh, Mike Myers, the man himself, does a show on this very same channel at this very same time where he does technical presentations, answers your questions in preparation for CompTIA exams and things like that. Catch his show, please, on Monday. He's got a really good ongoing series right now. And uh, I'll give you some more information on, on Monday's show as we get toward the end of our show. I'm doing that. All of my paragraphs end with the end drop like the news guy. <laughs> so our focus here is using Raspberry Pi computers to advance our skills and knowledge to prepare for CompTIA exams and to expand our abilities in real world computing expertise. I have some good stuff along both of those lines today. It's going to be a fun day. So for any and all of our AMAs, mics, minds, ask questions, propose topics. And like I said, we're wide ranging. Whatever you want to talk about that's tech, uh, topical stuff, don't want to do topical stuff. Mostly no, but I know uh, at least one person here is going to be doing uh, <laughs> semi non sequitur postings that have to do with lyrics of uh, certain artists who passed away in the last 24 hours we lost two big uh to call them big stars is kind of literal and well um so meatloaf passed away late last night if you don't know him then you know your color ain't this color <laughs> and louis anderson the comedian passed away this morning i believe at 68 something like that meatloaf was 74 that stuff matters to you know old guys like me kind of sort of it's not like shoot i was really hoping meatloaf would come out with another album <laughs> he's not like he's doing a lot of new stuff that we know about I'm sure he's producing and doing things like that well not today but <laughs> and same thing i don't know if louis anderson was uh traveling but i have a comedy uh station here on the uh the box to my right when i'm working late into the night if i'm not listening to music i'm probably listening to comedy <clears throat> we got specials Oh, do we have specials? Let me see if I can post something up here. Back channel, if you would post uh, specials up so they can pull it off of there. I see lots of activity going on in, on uh, the YouTube chat. I will get that caught up in veritable moments. Uh, AMA weekly specials. Here we go. But until then, these are specials that are available only to the people who watch the uh, the AMAs. You know, not because you couldn't tell your friend and share it with them. I hope you do. But uh, we don't advertise these anywhere else other than talking about them here in the AMA. So we got a weekly special. These specials change every week. The code word changes every week. But this week's special is 50% off bundles. The bundles are made up of an ebook and the corresponding total test or practice test. You just put those two things in your basket. Go to totalsem.com, do some shopping, put stuff in your basket. And then when you check out, Use the uh, checkout code BULLDOG, all one word, lowercase, B-U-L-L-D-O-G. Uh, and if you're a college football fan, you will appreciate where that came from uh, in the U.S. If you're not, then so be it. These are good through this Sunday night. And then we'll start up again with a new special and a new code word on Monday. Uh, our bundles are, we got bundles available. Thank you. Posted special at 209, says Scott in the back channel. Thank you. So you can copy and paste this uh, so you don't have to try to remember it or do a screen pause or something like that. But we do have bundles available for A+, plus, Network+, plus, Security+, plus, Cybersecurity Analyst+, plus, Penetration tender, te Tester+, plus, uh, and AWS Systems Architecture Associate. That's not a plus. It's not a CompTIA certification. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Anything else up here that I want to take care of while I've got this slide up? I've kind of learned to do that now. Uh, contact. This is an AMA. Ask me anything. But if you can't ask me here live today in the chat, feature for whatever your rationale may be, you can certainly contact me in or Scott or Andrew or Mike Myers in other ways like email. So since we all work at Total Sem, you can find us by our first name and last initial. I am Dave Rush. Therefore, I am Dave R at TotalSem.com. Scott Jernigan is Scott J at TotalSem.com. Andrew Hutz, Andrew uh, H. I always want to say Andrew W at TotalSem.com. And by the way, Michael Myers works for Total Seminars. And so he's Michael M. If you want to contact him directly, there's other contact information on this page. Uh, go back and do a screen freeze if you need to remember it. I keep a website up and running at least on weekends now with uh, archive documents for all the stuff that I use for presentations. We didn't have one last week because I didn't do a presentation last week, but I do have a nice presentation this week. And so I got all kinds of goody uh, documents that I use to prepare for and the outlines that I use and, and study aids and, 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 and. So uh, if you would like to get any of the documents that I have ever created for any of the shows, they're all available at my running server. It's pirsquare.zapto.org, P-I-R-S-Q-U-A-R-E.zapto, Z-A-P-T-O.org. And they will be there for you. They're there right now. No, the answer to today's contest are not in the document that's there today. Uh, let's see, that's coming up later. We just did the AMA weekly specials. Oh, one more thing. Let's do this and get this out of the way. Uh, back channel, if you guys would post a uh, the link to the new Discord, the new unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel server or whatever it is, uh, we don't have a Total Seminars Discord channel. However, good friend of ours and friend of the show, Jose Braden, set one up. Uh, about a year ago, a little less than a year ago, and then bad things happened to it the other day, and we had to abandon it, and they, they created a, thank you, uh, Discord link posted at 2.11. You can copy and paste that or just click on it and join us. So the, the guys uh, who own and operate and, and run these things, it's not us. We're just users like everybody else, but they've created a brand spanking new Discord channel that looks exactly like the old one, and we've already got about 25% of our old inhabitants uh, having uh, migrated over to the server. We hope you'll join us there. We get together. Okay, and uh, 212 posted it as well. We got him up there. Uh, so we get together, you know, all the time. The, the, the channel is active 24 hours a day. It's got computer help. It's got Linux. It's got study group things. It's got Raspberry Pi. It's got whatever Mike was talking about that day. There's zillions and zillions. And so somebody put a, re a, a recipes some forum on there the other day and there's some good recipes going up there and I'm, i fear that eventually somebody will turn that into a humor uh sub channel i don't know what you call the sub channels on discord sub discords there we go at any rate uh but uh after the shows after mike's amas and my amas uh myself sometimes mike sometimes scott sometimes all of us or a mix thereof uh, fire up a camera and a microphone and we get on and we just talk with everybody uh, in a, a much more free form and sometimes a little saltier uh, format than we do here on these AMAs. I uh, hope you join us. And if you don't have a mic and camera, you don't want to join us that way, please just come on over and uh, you can text to us and, and look at our faces and we're answering. But we get a lot more give and take that way when you're uh, joining up to say, look, I get this problem with my computer. We try and troubleshoot that here. It's just not possible. You get 200 characters on the YouTube chat line and you get the idea. What is the tutorial link? Okay, that's enough of that nonsense. <clears throat> it was fun, but we got more later today. Yeah, hearing wonky sounds. Reading my notes, just checking to make sure um, where I ought to be. <clears throat> okay, so we do have projects today. We have a project today. Um, and one of the things I always like to do is let you know, do you have to have a Raspberry Pi for today's project? And the answer today is no. Any, and as far as I know, every Linux distro will do what we're doing today. And the really cool thing about today's project is there's nothing you got to download for the most part. 
um, there's an optional thing you'll see, but uh, you can follow along with me for the, the meat of it in real time. If you've got a, a, a distro sitting beside you running on a Raspberry Pi or another computer or in a virtual machine, you can watch uh, the AMA on this screen and type into your other screen and do some really neat stuff with me today. In total real time. Uh, the where we've been and where we're going last week, we did a general Q&A because my voice was in really bad shape compared to today. Uh, things improved. I probably could have done a show, but I didn't know it was going to be possible. But we did open up a discussion to lay some groundwork for today's process. We started uh, introducing uh, the concept of DNS query and testing utilities. So today we're going to do them. And that's it. I don't have a tutorial per se. Uh, I did get a lot of good information from a particular website. I'll share that with you in a little while. But remember, if it all goes too fast, just go to pyrsquare.zapto.org and download today's documents. And everything that I'm going to talk about there is provided in great detail, including much more. More, see? All right, let's go see what's going on here on... <clears throat> the YouTube chat channel. <clears throat> all right, well, I had to scroll all the way back to the beginning. We've got lots of people turned up. So it turn, turns up 40 minutes before the show. Hello, and Des543 is here. Nice to see you. Uh, I saw you on uh, uh, the Discord, on the new Discord channel uh, when you checked in. So nice to see you. Uh, the Des is intriguing because Mike's nickname uh, is moniker on many, many, many uh, public forums and things like that is Des Weds. So I, I saw Des and said, oh, is this one of Mike's alter egos? I suspect not, but Andre de Goyer is here, old timer, and along with Tullowit and others is a moderator over at the new Discord channel. Get to know them. They will do nice things for you. Hey, I'd like a forum that does this. Oh, sure. They get together and say, yep, that's what we'll do. Uh, and they didn't create it. Uh, the creator of the new one is Siegfried, who was probably here. We'll see. He does work now. Uh, let's see. Scott checked in a couple minutes before the show, as ever he does. Many thanks, Scott. Scott's multitasking right now, so but he is uh, he's doing stuff back in the background. Both of the guys are. <clears throat> Didi Washington's here. Welcome back, Nubian Queen. Nubian, I saw you just transferred over to the new site the other day. Welcome, both here and there. Universal Pedagogue saw you the other day. Congratulations. Happy Friday to you as well. Peaky boys. Ooh. <sighs> that a reference to some people's favorite show, which is terrifying. <laughs> I got to wonk on something over here. Okay. <clears throat> of course, Peaky. Oh, yeah, you don't have to ask if you can ask questions. That is the nature of what we do here. Ask questions. After my long little intro there, now we are ready to take on questions from all comers. <clears throat> dot star is that a question because <clears throat> it has meaning jeremy parker is here and andrew hutz checks in before he posts his first back channel thing peaky boys so mostly i'm trying this is uh time mark 204 <clears throat> in case you're following along if you've posted a question check your own time mark check the time mark that i'm at and you'll know if i've missed your question in which case post it again or if i haven't gotten to it yet <clears throat> all right so peaky boys at 204 so mostly i'm trying to get into the it field don't know much about it but i'm up to date on tech i'm 23 and want to start a career but really stuck on what certification i should go for okay well if you're looking to get into it um it has Lots of specialty branches up at the, the high end as you work your way up through um, from IT management to IT security and, and uh, cryptography and things like that. Uh, if you're talking about turning wrenches and things like that, and those things, you want to pursue, if it's at all possible, a four-year degree. You're going to improve your odds of getting not only employment, but good employment with that. However, as you're breaking into it, uh, Start by turning screwdrivers and wrenches and answering questions on the phone. And for that, the uh, the best place to start, if you're up to date on tech, you may not know about IT, but I'm thinking you probably use a computer. If you've ever been in your computer, if you've ever run across a Windows problem and you looked it up on Google on uh, what the problem is and how to fix it, then you, you've got a good handle on the tech. If you're uh, a daily, everyday computer user and, and can manage some 
you know, use your word processor and use a spreadsheet program, things like that. Uh, a plus is the usual starting place for people with not zero, zero, zero experience like a, uh, a middle schooler or maybe a beginning high schooler, but, you know, somebody who's used a computer, they've done some gaming, things like that. A plus certification is probably the place to start. Uh, if you have literally zero, if you've, you've barely ever touched a computer, you don't know how to use a word processor, you don't know how to turn on Windows, uh, then there's another uh, certification out there to pursue, and that's called ITF Plus, uh, IT Fundamentals, and it'll teach you everything that you need to know about a user of computers, and there's a little bit in there about supporting computers, but uh, you start with, with for most folks, uh, an A plus certification that gets you a help desk job that gets you uh, a good internship at a place that uh, <clears throat> has growth potential. And from there, you learn what they have to teach you and you work on studying for the next job that you want for an upgrade within your own organization for I want to jump ship and go to this organization because they do uh, what I ultimately want to do. But that's the real secret of the thing. What do you want to do? Find that answer in your soul, and then go take a look at the roadmaps to becoming a cyber analyst, to becoming a cloud specialist. Uh, and a lot of them are going to start with A-plus certification. <laughs> Andrew's got Thor's Banhammer, Mjolnir. We need to, to give the, uh, the Banhammer name here, or the Banhammer here, a good name. Uh, yeah, Discord links are posted, Suleiman, by all means, join us. Uh, they were posted at uh, 2.11 and 2.12 by both Scott and, excuse me, Andrew, and, 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 and Andrew, there we go. Yeah, see, tell what's right on my mindset, what kind of IT work do you want to do? Catherine's here, hello, young lady, nice to see you. <laughs> Andre de Goyer, setting up Windows Server 2019 VM for homework for the second time because I didn't read the instructions. You always seem to be doing things the second time. I missed this one critical step. <laughs> Starting to scare me a little bit, Andrew. Uh, a lot of people saying go for my A plus because it'll get my foot in the door. I think we're I'm, I'm in line with what a lot of people are saying. Uh, and getting into networking, that's fine. Uh, starting with Network Plus, if you have no hands-on experience, you need the information available in A+. You don't have to get the certification, but need the knowledge because a lot of the networking foundations that you need in order to get the Network Plus information, maybe have it make sense and pass the test, uh, comes through A+, and the uh, course is available there. Lots of people answering you, helping you out. Sound good. Yep. Meatloaf was a fun singer. You can't say that. You're, you're not from Chicago. You're a Philly boy. <laughs> My pleasure, Peaky boys. Two way Tullowitz. Uh, ask more. <laughs> yeah, I know. Louis was is a, a sad departure. I suspect he was touring and I would have caught his show next time he came to town. You know, all the shows are being canceled that are good and interesting. I have tickets for several major shows in 2022. I know what's going to happen to them. And I've had some of them for over a year because of what's already happened to them. Okay, reading uh, Suleiman. Scott, can you post the Discord link? He did. Alex. Alex is here, our favorite ever uh, person from Milan. We love you, Alex. Scott Jernigan, someone hasn't done his homework yesterday. <laughs> Scott's working like mad. What are you talking about? Uh, JM is here, who, as usual, doesn't say hi, how you doing, just checking in, dive straight in with a master's degree level question. That's right, we love you, JM, happy to do it. JM, hi, I'm a little confused. How does NMAP distinguish between a public IP address and a private address, or can it only use public IP addresses to scan it? Well, of course, it can scan any IP address. It distinguishes it the same way that you distinguish it. You learn them, um, so you know that 10.xxx, x.x.x, is the class A private IP address. You know, now, how do you know that? Because you learned it and you put it right here in this little memory cell. You know that 172.16.x.x.0.0 actually through 172.31.0.0 
is the class B private IP address range. You know that because you learned it and it's in this little memory cell. And you know, 192.168.0 through 192.168.255 are the class C private addresses. Well, Nmap knows exactly the same thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. He says uh, they're just literally stored in a memory cell that came from a file in the program. So it doesn't know or it doesn't care. You give it an address range. I mean, it has some different handling routines. It says, okay, well, if I'm going to deal with privates and I can't go through a, a NAT router or I can't go through any kind of router, but oh, it knows and it's programmed to deal with the different I, uh, public and or private IP addresses. And the same is true for pretty much every utility in existence. They know if you're messing with a private IP or with a public IP, not everyone, but uh, when you get a utility that doesn't understand it, that's okay. The router will give it a smack if it tries to pass that information to the outside network or it'll convert it in the case of NAT. 211, tell away, there is a voucher and a total sum access being given away. I wish Dave would give away a pie too. Yeah, we're, we're reevaluating giving away pies. I love to give away pies, but we every time we do it, a wonderful, lucky person or persons uh, internationally wins one. We love when that happens, except it is becoming so complicated to deal with not just purchasing a pie for them, but then we've got to deal with all of the, the various regulations and restrictions and taxes and deliveries and things like that. Um, uh, one of the regulars here, one of your co-moderators, uh, is the last one to have won a pie from me. Uh, and because of all the hoops and pain that we had to jump through, um, we have, at, at least for the moment, said no, no more physical things, uh, at least internationally. And, you know, I don't want to say, here's a pie, and anybody in the U.S. or Canada or Puerto Rico can have it, but sorry about the rest of the world. It's just not going to work out for you. So we're, we're working on, hopefully, some kind of solution, but nothing ready to go. You're very welcome, Suleiman. All right, uh, my Pi R Square server is posted for the link at 211. JD and Sam Gunter. I'm a Bama fan. Yeah, my kid went to Bama uh, for his first two years and he transferred to a Texas school, but uh, many tears were shed. <laughs> and besides, if I tried to put up a code, roll tide, nobody would get it except for those of us who are familiar with the program. Yeah, it was a very good game. A very enjoyable game from front to back. The only thing wrong with it was the outcome. <laughs> People really moved. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I was going to let that go. Hang on. I super scrolled. There we go. Yeah. Uh, there were some changes made to the old server. There's not much change that the guys can do to the old server, but they made one that uh, was kind of a real cattle prod to a lot of the people who uh, have resisted migrating. <laughs> they did something that said, resistance is futile. You will be absorbed by the new unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. Uh, what are you doing? Yeah, 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 that was good. Jason Helms is here. Hey, man, good seeing you. Get the afternoon off. I'm not reading anything that's got an at sign in it unless it's got my name after it. So I can get through this stuff and get onto contests and programs and other things. We have cool things to talk about and show you and do you. Okay, lots of intercommunication, which by all means, please conduct. And if you want to have much longer communications, join us on the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. Yes, Discord, Danny Torn is a Danny Tom. Yeah, Torn, Tom. Danny Tom, sorry. The, the M on my thing, the font on here is, is nuts. And I often have trouble distinguishing between RN and M. Red Tubers here. Hey, man, good to see you. Des 540 figure not Mike, for sure. <laughs> but curious to know that. Yeah, I guess, you, uh, you know, watch his show sometimes. He always talk about all the different ways to contact him. And he says, look, if it's not Michael M at totalsem.com, more often than not, it's Des Weds. He calls it a kinetic acronym because you don't have to move your hand. You just a couple of fingers and uh, up on your left hand and it gets you there. So, you know, anything that he's got, like his proton mail, Des Weds, his uh, 
I don't know, all of his other social social media accounts and various other accounts. He's Deswed. So if you're ever trying to find Mike uh, on a forum that you think he might participate in or a platform, try Deswed's. Plural. Anytime I'm listening while working on a new Bluetooth dongle for my Linux box. They're getting better at Bluetooth, but yeah, that's still a weak point in a lot of, of distros. Reading questions here. Uh, Danny Tom has cre uh, completed A+, Net+, Sec+, and ITIL. Now, that means here's something we know about Danny Tom. He is not in the U.S. Uh, because nobody in the U.S. knows about ITIL. It, it's just not the thing here, and it, it's much more so in Europe and England. So, uh, I want to do Linux. I, you know, you got to do Linux in the real world. It's it's part of the 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 job universe and learn programming cool troll nerd <laughs> not bad <laughs> yeah meatloaf's gone <laughs> i posted this at discord but i'll do it now um the missus got up first and checked her phone in the morning, as we all do. And there was a message from my kid at Texas Tech. And the message was, Meatloaf is dead. Now, he's too young to know Meatloaf, but he knows we like him. Uh, and so I grabbed my phone right away when the missus read it to me. And I sent, you took the words right out of my mouth. Ah! But it was still sad. Esky's here. One of our prize winners and otherwise regular participant, poster, questioner. Nice to see you, Eski, again. Sorry, I super scrolled. There we go. JM, another NMAP question. Can NMAP also scan internal network IP addresses as well? Absolutely. Of course it can. You just set the range in, in NMAP of what you want it to scan, and it does. I do that all the time. I'll, I'll flip back and forth. Uh, when I put a new Pi online, if, if, I don't, if I didn't set a static address when I did the installation, uh, there's a lot of different ways to connect to it without knowing the IP address, but I, I got to know the IP address, and I would like to use uh, either NMAP or Advanced IP Scanner, my two favorite scanners. And so obviously those are on internal network addresses. Tullowit, I, I was reading that, your response to Danny Tom at 226, and you say, I was bummed. I, I had a little dyslexic moment there, and I thought it said, I was bummerized because of the way all the other text around there is. Yes, I do love to give away Raspberry Pis. <laughs> and Andre <laughs> loves to win them. Yeah, you were our last winner. You and Kathy were really working your hearts out to get that thing in your hands, but I'm glad it is there now. <clears throat> Lots of internal conversations I'm rolling by. Danny Tom 228, I have a RPI 4, and I was working on setting up DNS mask to try and resolve local devices on my network. Then I found that DDWRT can do that as well. Okay, you know, <clears throat> it's, it's all about what you want what you want to accomplish use ddwrt if you want to make it happen use rpi4 and dns mask if you want to learn how to use uh, and build your own dns resolver and learn a little linux in the process so that way you get an end result and you get some pretty cool learning along the way but whatever what your goal is Jason Holmes, yeah, I went at 6 a.m., worked a few overtime hours, Yo, bank that cash, and decided to jump on here and see what we're doing for the Pi Day. So we're going to be doing, uh, in short order, we're only half an hour into it, uh, probably another 15 minutes or so, we'll do a, uh, a contest, and then we'll do the presentation, and then we'll do another contest, and it's going to be fun. <clears throat> Reading questions here. Wasn't sure if bind would be better. Bind is dead. <clears throat> DNS mask is fine. Um, Unbound is the replacement for bind. So if you're going to play with that, uh, you can do that. Of, of course, you know a lot of us here, myself included, use pi hole because not only is it a black hole for syncing DNS ad post, but it's a, a primary resolver. And uh, man, it is just a, a monster of a thing. You can also uh, do pie hole and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, DNS mask 
at the same time. They work together and or unbound working together. <laughs> Meatloaf Marathon, I like it. Uh, one of the stations I listen to on, on the satellite box here, uh, every time somebody major like that passes away, they devote much of the day to uh, marathoning. Uh, I cried most of the day listening to uh, David Bowie last year. Ran out of ideas for my pie. Ah! Come on, I had 76 in the can here from the last year and a half, and I've got about 40 in my cool things to do. I'm going to do uh, cacti uh, next week and the following week, and then we're going to do Nessus. If you've got any interest sometime in your future at pursuing pen testing, red team, blue team, stuff like that, that's one you want to get your fingers in. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Really, Des was it MySpace? MySpace. <laughs> That's brilliant, Scott. <laughs> You're in the US. You were forced to take ITIL in my classes. Man. Wow, that is wacky, Danny. Bless your heart. So congratulations. You and there uh, nine other Americans hold ITIL certification. <laughs> Somali's here. Mike's favorite names, Desweds, Timmy, Tommy. Uh, Freddy, I do the Freds. <laughs> I've always done Fred. Jason Holmes, Scott, and my is my space a thing? No, I think it exists. No, I think they got absorbed by one of the other big ones like uh, Meta, or whatever they call themselves now. JD and Sam Gunther. Oops, come here. You, I'm almost at the end here. I am at DJ Gunther on Discord. Very good. <clears throat> Same time, I seen where someone set up a distributed computing environment with a few pies. Interesting. Oh, I don't know. Like this little fiver here we did as a project over a couple of weeks. And I got another four for project coming up in the first quarter where, oh, we got, uh, we're going to do a, uh, a uh, an elastic Docker setup. So we'll use Ubuntu and we'll have, uh, servers available on all three things we're gonna uh thank you provision them with ansible and then we're going to use a, a docker manager to bring up an instance when the load calls for it and then take the instance down when the load backs off that is a real world cloud skill by far and away it's iced tea. Everybody always asks. That's my last iced tea. I just poured out the last of it. Uh, we made that three weeks ago when the weather was still warm enough to make iced tea. <laughs> Hopefully we get like one wacko summer day. We can make another batch. But otherwise, my last iced tea until spring. Jam says at 234, I was thinking that internal IP addresses were unique to only that network or subnet. So I was confused. Well, NMAP can pass through routers. Um, and if you do subnetting on uh, a router with private IPs, there's an interesting thing. Can private IPs, can a router route to subnetted private IPs? The answer is, I don't know. I'm going to look that one up, but I, it's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to be. All right, very good. I'm glad you got a, a handle on that. 234 Universal Pedagogue says, hey, Dave, I'm new to the channel, this one, but I know I've seen you before because I loved your name. Because We love the term pedagogy in the educational institutions, such as Total Seminars. Anyways, hey, Dave, I'm new to the channel, but I'm absolutely loving it so far. What got you so interested in Raspberry Pi? Wow. Okay. The price. <laughs> let's, just, let's go with that for the moment. Um, okay. So, you know, I won't do the whole background. I like computers from the beginning. And, and one of my degrees is electrical engineering. And so you start playing with computers, of course, uh, back in the, uh, the 70s and 80s. Uh, and then... Among my many jobs, I was an instructor for Novell, who still exists, but their big networking product doesn't exist. And they bought a Linux, a, a Unix company, actually, and uh, 
incorporated some of their training into uh, the other training that we were already doing. And so I got interested in it and, and taught it lightly for a couple of years. And then I, I played with it on and off lightly for many, 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 many years. But you know, I'm a Windows guy like everybody else. And then this Pi thing came out. What a nice thing that's kind of happened today. <clears throat> Hey, uh, back channel, would somebody send a message to Janelle that we're doing drama and I'll touch base with her after the show's done? Well, one day, around 10 years ago, a little less than that, I uh, was reading whatever computer news feeds came across the way. And there was this company that said, we've got a, a, a new computer coming out and it's going to be really small. Uh, and they gave some interesting specs on it. And it's going to be 35 bucks. Thank you very much. Uh, I thought, well, 35 bucks for a computer that's, you know, new and, and it's, not, it's going to have flaws and it's going to have challenges. But I said, how do you go wrong with that? So I coughed up an order for them and they were already back ordered like mad. I think it took about 10 weeks for my first one to come in. This may be my first one i was up just looking and what's cool about it is it you can tell with, with a little time and practice uh how different they look but they all look pretty much the same they are all the identical size so this is either a raspberry pi b which is the first one that came out or the a which came out a little later uh you can tell them from the later models the twos and the threes and the fours because the first models only had a pair of USB ports uh, and the modern ones all have four, but they've all always had HDMI connectors. They've all had expansion pins. There was 25 on this first generation of them, first two generations. And then later uh, they went to 40 pins. <clears throat> the product line has grown. Here's a newer Raspberry Pi, it's in the case. Uh, but there's 40 pins on it. There's four USBs on there. Uh, you can tell this isn't a four because it doesn't have two HDMI ports on it. But okay. And then more. They've got other form factors. I got two other form factors that I got buried back here. I'm not going to dig those out. Uh, but so I was interested because of the price and because of the, uh, the electronics growth potential. Because of those nice exposed pins, you can do really neat, fun, cool things with them. And of course, they're default operating system was Linux. And so it gave me an opportunity to refresh on the, the Linux that I hadn't really used uh, as a day-to-day -day user for years. And, you know, since then I'm living in the, the Linux world every single day. And because of my computer background and physics background, it is just a natural thing for me to play with. And because of my desire to teach we extend that into my my incredible desire to share that and evangelize if you will information with you so that's kind of the answer and i'm always wanting to learn new stuff with my pie i didn't know about this show till today so i'm oh, wonderful please join us weekly and you know look back through the archives uh the regular the on the uh Total Seminars YouTube channel. You'll see I've got all 76 of our shows. You can figure out roughly what they've got going on. You can use my Zapto server and get my documents. It's good stuff. <clears throat> Jason, summer here, expecting snow again. We get snow like one every three years. Okay. And the snow's piling up outside. Okay. Caught up on questions here, which is a good thing to be at 43 minutes past the first hour. So let me go back to notes, get caught up on any interesting notes, and then we'll do a contest. <clears throat> contest, you say? Yes, we have a contest for a giveaway. In fact, we have a couple of them today. Thank you, Scott, back channel for that contact. So uh, we're in my little section of outline that says interesting news, tricks, and techniques of the week. And, you know, sometimes it's technical, sometimes it's something that is interesting to me or happened or whatever. So my first thing was last night. What did I do last night? Um, the missus and I have been working like dogs for our respective companies and for uh, life and everything else. And just said, brain break. We're not doing anything tonight. I didn't study my Linux Plus course last night. 
I studied it on my lunch hour because I, I can't go without, you know, you don't want to drop things like that. Uh, but I said, I got to, we're just going to turn on television or video or whatever and watch two things. So uh, we're always a day behind because I'm a cord cutter on newly released shows. So last night was Boba Fett 4. First one was really good. Second and third, I thought we're kind of slowing down. But yesterday, yeah, getting better again. I, I think it's going to be really good to follow along. And uh, a movie that we missed when it came out. I don't get uh, catch a lot of movies. In fact, I've seen one movie at the movie theaters uh, since COVID. Uh, but the kid ha- came home for winter break and had his, in his mind a particular movie that he wanted to see on break and it just didn't happen. We did go to the movies and we did get to see uh, that one movie that came out that was really enjoyable. <laughs> I can't remember what it is, <laughs> but uh, the last James Bond movie, uh, we finally caught up on that last night. No time to die. and uh, Very enjoyable. <clears throat> All right. Other things I'm pressing on with my Linux plus course. I'm uh, about 10 and a half hours, 11 hours into it. I got six hours to go. The presentation is just awful. I've told you this before. For every 30 minutes of presentation that the presenter does, I have to take three hours. He'll do something. It will fail. And then he'll barrel on having ignored the failure. And we didn't teach anything. So I got to stop. And then I got to go and learn it. Now, I think there's some benefit in that because I'm doing a lot of research. I'm trying a lot of things. And so, but I do hate the fact, you know, if I watch a Mike Udemy presentation for 30 minutes, I might have to stop once or twice, take a note. Maybe I want to stop and try something on my computer, but I can sit there for the whole 30 minutes and learn for 30 minutes straight and then study my notes after the fact. I can take notes real time. Cannot do that with this course. So it's just murderous. It's a, uh, a 17 hour course. It's got 24 ostensible chapters. Uh, so for 17 hours, I'm going to spend every bit of 50 hours learning this material from him. Uh, but what I wanted to mention about that is uh, what will come out of it. First of all, is uh, a new Linux course. I'm going to take the knowledge that I'm getting from that and, uh, my own notes and my own research and things like that and create a Linux plus course. <clears throat> By the way, I'm doing that at night on my own, Scott, because <clears throat> I can't get budgetary blessing from total time. We just don't have the time to, to do a lot of new courses that aren't daily driver uh, content for us. So, but it won't be long. Once I get this course done and I, I pass the exam, uh, I will have the thing slammed together in a couple of weeks. But what I wanted to tell you is I am taking this studying in the, the way that Mike represents or recommends. And that is, what do you need to prepare for a CompTIA exam? You need three things in the world of Mike. You need a good video. You need a good book. You need practice test questions. So I don't have a good video, but I'm making the best of it. Uh, I got a good book. I was reading it last night and it slid under the pile when I was organizing today. But uh, using the McGraw-Hill Linux Plus all-in-one book. So whenever he uh, poorly teaches a topic, I'm off and I'm in the book and I'm reading about it and then online and doing research. And then I'm using practice test questions for a number of sources. The online practice test questions that are shotgun splattered all over the net suck. And this is true in my experience for every single CompTIA brain dump kind of thing people post questions and they may or may not be accurate i think some of them are probably very accurate and they post the answer choices which are probably in many cases accurate and then people include what they believe to be the right answer and i know you know what i do i i help create a plus and net plus and security plus and other plus uh, course content and, and I research it and I know this stuff. And so when I run across something like that, I want to, what, why would you say that's the right answer? Well, I am encountering exactly the same thing on all these scattershot practice tests for Linux plus. Oh my gosh. There are just some awful ones. How could you say that's right or wrong? And I'll go everywhere and, and you know, try to prove that they're right in their assertion and they're not. Uh, and then, but I can find all over the place wrong. What's the exception product to that? Total Tester Online from Total Seminars. Why is that different? Because we don't do brain dump questions. We don't copy and paste other people's questions and guess what the answer might be. We write the questions. 
or we license them. Uh, and we therefore write the answers or we license them uh, and the explanations. So when you come to one of our things, we've missed one every now and again, you know, we got 1200, 1400 questions, something like that. And a plus, we might have a mistake or, you know, five in that list, but big deal. We'll, we'll find them. We'll fix them. And the rest of them are enough to prep for the thing. So I am loving our practice test questions, uh, total tester Linux plus, and I will use those for any and all other CompTIA certifications that I use. And I strongly encourage you to do that. So take advantage, somebody, a back channel, you want to repost our, uh, specials of the week that would be great take advantage of our bundles um the a plus ebook and the a plus total tester package 50 percent off using the code bulldog and all of the other matching bundle packages that are available on our site you don't buy them as a bundle you uh get the ebook put that in your basket get the matching total tester product put that in your basket then when you check out Type in Bulldog and you get them for 50% off. That's lovely stuff. All right, moving through notes, moving through notes. Uh, I'm chewing through time. I'm not going to put up the friend of show links today. So let me catch up on any last questions. And then the next thing in my handy dandy notes. Okay. Um, specials are reposted at 250. Thank you very much, Andrew. All right, so you have any questions that I missed? And then we're going to go straight to our first contesto. Snow, snow, snow. Lots of snow talk. <laughs> oh, there goes the super scroll. Thank goodness. All right, it's not bad. Reading questions, mostly conversation that I don't have to participate in. Where did you purchase your pie? Um, I purchased... Uh, my pies anywhere that I can get my hands on them. I'll tell you what, uh, in the early days, they're, they're scarce right now, so this doesn't work. But uh, Craigslist has been a blessing for me in the past. There were, uh, at one point, I had close to 100 pies in here, uh, and you know, I was picking them up cheap and willy-nilly. That, that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, so when I buy a pie these days, uh, I buy, since I'm in the U.S., I buy from the official U.S. distributor, um, which is called Newark, newark.com, N-E-W-A-R-K.com, like Newark or like this, the city Newark. Uh, there's one or two other smaller outfits. There's a, an outfit in Chicago whose name I, I forget. The cool thing about those sites is they don't sell them over retail. They're not allowed. That's why they're uh, official distributors of them. If you want to know where to get a pie at retail price, now you can't get them all right now. I've got orders for pies with Newark uh orders for uh, more pi fours with eight gigs and orders with the new pi zero version two uh sitting with element but you know you put the back order in and then as soon as they come in stock you get yours first uh if you just put yourself on the notification list by the time you get the notification everybody else will and they will be gone uh but if you want to find out who the official distributor is in your country or the closest country to you go to raspberrypi.com Go to the buy a pie link and go pick something that you want to buy. It doesn't matter. They're not going to sell it to you. But let's say you pick a Raspberry Pi 4 with four gigs. Well, at the bottom of that page is a link to all of the distributors in all of the countries where they're available. And you can just pick from that list and place your order there. I still continue to search the used markets, eBay and Craigslist and things like that, but those are slim pickings these days. <laughs> Jason Helms is taking a stab at the question already, huh? Nowhere close. It's not going to be a numeric answer, at least not for the first one. Using your storm report, this is a conversation, conversations amongst each other. That's more than okay. I encourage it. I was hoping Dave would see. Uh, of all the meatloaf puns I've already dropped. So, you know what? I mostly slide by most of your comments, Dolwood. I apologize. <clears throat> oh, goodness. Oh, duh. The snow is really piling up outside. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I want you and I need you, man. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Is Elpic 
like an intro to Linux Plus. Yes, there are three LPICs right now. LPIC 1, Essentials, LPIC 2, Advanced, and then there's an LPIC 3 where you start to get enterprise -y. The 2 used to have a link. You used to be able to get Linux Plus, and then they would automatically uh, issue you LPIC 1 and LPIC 2, but or maybe it was the other way around. But they don't do that anymore because... Uh, they no longer share an organization and blah, blah, blah. but yeah, LPIC one is, is Linux basics and uh, a, a very good one to pursue. You can do that with little background. If you want to pursue Linux plus, you really ought to have a, a year or two of fairly real world experience under your belt. I, I'm going to say that uh, I've been through half the material, uh, probably 20% of the material uh, is either new or goes into much greater depth than I ever knew about. So I'm learning a lot, maybe even a little more than that. Reading questions, I'm passing 249. Scott, you're thinking LPIC 1 is comparable to Linux Plus, huh? I think it's a little lighter than that. Universal Pedagogue. If it's a movie to recommend, I really enjoyed Dune. All right, let's go down the Dune road. <clears throat> I liked the new Dune. I love the old Dune. I was horrified at the new Dune, and they did a very nice job, and they're doing a good job falling close to the book, to discover that it is basically one-third of the first Dune movie. So they're adding some detail. They're adding uh, some depth. but we're going to have three two-hour movies that are going to be the same as Dune 1. When I heard that it was going to be a series, excuse me, I thought it was going to be three Dune books. And I was very excited. And then here comes Dune. What do you mean? You're only a third of the way through the, the original. You're only a third of the way through the book. So I was disappointed. Apologies. I do have to keep this throat clear. It's hard to talk. I sound a little crunchy and chewy with a cough drop in my face, but it's got to happen. I'll try and keep it unobtrusive. Eski, hi, Dave Rush. When will I get access to the free practice test that I was given by Mike last week? Um, I am given to understand uh, that all the things from last week were dealt with. So I will uh, check your, the short version is check your spam buckets and things like that. Uh, I'll send out a, a quick message to the person who handles that stuff. But what happens is I submit them on Friday. That means I would have submitted yours if you want early last week. I think that was. Uh, I would have submitted on Friday night. And then Monday morning, uh, our people get on that. And I got a message Monday morning that says all of last week's stuff are taken care of. And then a couple other things that those folks do for us have been done. So you should have heard from them. Uh, by email on Monday. So check your spam buckets. And when we're done with the show, uh, I'll send a message to the nice folks who do that. And just do a double check and make sure that uh, you are there. I know that we have the correct email address because I know that you received my confirmation that I had received yours. So I sent that email back to you. So, all right, looking into it. Pie scalper. <laughs> Wilson's here. You're late. That's okay. You haven't missed the project yet. And you haven't missed the contest. I'm about to do that in the next two, three minutes. First contest is going to be out. That it's finally sunny in Dallas. Wow, you're just up in uh, the Big D, huh? Cool. I drive through the Big D about four times, five times a year. And uh, I never stop. And I, I realized I have a very good and very old friend who moved there, but a little bit before I moved here to Houston. And so my world has changed. And so next time I pass through Big D, I'm going to stop and get caught up. And anybody else, I, I know there's a couple other people who are regulars here up in Dallas. Big D, in case you're not in the area and don't know its nickname. Danny Tom says at 256, I saw the new Linux plus 005 beta cert is out, but no study materials yet. Well, that's right. Um, so they always put the beta out before they put the real test out. The beta is good for about 30 more days from, I think, yesterday or so. Um, course writers have the objectives, but they can't release that stuff yet. So basically what happens is CompTIA writes a beta exam 
uh, with their subject matter experts saying these are things that people should and do know. And then they kind of expect people with lots of experience in the, the subject matter in Linux in this case to take it and then they can get a feel are uh, for are we digging too deep into this topic because a large percentage of people missed that one is this one too easy everybody gets that right and that's the whole point of the betas and then they will fine tune the objectives and resend those back out to course creators uh book writers and people like that so that they can fine tune their material and so we have no announcement when the real linux plus is going to come out we also have no official announcement when the uh XK4, uh, the, the 004, XK0004 exam is going to retire. And that's why I'm willing to make a course because we, the general process at CompTIA is uh, when they're going to retire a course, they post the retirement date. And that date is usually six months from the time they post it. So as long as they I haven't posted it yet. I know that we've got probably, I, I probably know, I hope that we will have six months of life left in the exam. And that's enough time for me to, to get a course out there for people to take advantage of. And then I'll also have the, the framework for a 005 when the objectives for that come out. All right. Uh, there's more questions. I'm done. I'm caught up on that. I want to do a giveaway because it is Three o'clock my time right now. I got this to do. I got our presentation to do. It's not a real long presentation. And then we got another giveaway. So we are going to give away practice test questions, access to total tester online practice test questions for 90 days. We're going to do this one as a uh, as a, a question, a multiple choice question. It's not coming from any of our study materials. It's one that I wrote this morning. Uh, will be multiple guests, previous winners of anything on either Mike's show or my show, vouchers, total testers are eligible to win. We do, however, weight things toward new people. If I see a, a winner who's won five times or whatever, uh, I, I might not see you first in my list, uh, but probably someone who hasn't won yet uh, a little closer in the list. Know what I'm saying? Because we're trying to spread the wealth around a little bit. Let's, let's everybody take advantage rather than people, you know, kind of piling up total testers. I'm taking 17 courses. <laughs> so I need 17 different total testers. Eh, they're only good for 90 days and we use this from the date we issue them. All right. So today's oh, test question, uh, the rules are you can put in one answer. Uh, there are four choices in this answer. I don't have them. I think I have them listed as A, B, C, D. Do not put in A, B, C, or D. Type in the text that is the answer. The first person who gets it right on my list that I feel hasn't over hoarded <laughs> will be the winner. A uh, little background on this, and then I'll post it up there. Objective 1.9 from uh, Core 2, 220 1002 wants us to know certain basic Linux commands. We had, we did a, a similar thing last week. Uh, so I have a question about Linux commands. Let me get a slide up here. And then we will read and post. Okay, there's the question. Then we share. Share screen. <laughs> this one. All right. Are you ready? Here's the question and the answer choices. In Linux, what is the function of the PS command? Your choices, printer status, PowerShell, process status, print shell. Which of those four things? Type in the full answer is the function of the PS command. If you see somebody typed in what you believe to, the right, to be the right answer, don't give up. Type in your answer too, because it may turn up in my system in different order. It may be somebody that I've looked at and said, you know what? They've won too many times. You got a better shot at it. So <clears throat> let's get some answer posts up there. And I will start following along here. <clears throat> Back channel, I posted the uh, question and correct answer if you didn't already know it. <clears throat> You can always guess. You don't have to be a Linux guru to guess one out of four possibilities. 
and you certainly don't have to be studying A+. Plus. So we've got lots of different uh, total test or online practice test courses. Uh, reading questions here. <clears throat> Well, sometimes you folks make it easy. You get the right words in there, but <coughs> not necessarily the right order. So I'm going to look at that. Good. I like this question. I'd like to with the... I can see a few more responses, please. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go look up past winners. <clears throat> not that one. <clears throat> Keep going. I'm just researching and looking. There we go. That's the page we're going to be using here. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking up, Scott. Uh, um, that was a winner on the 5th of this year. And then again, we allow multiple winners. <clears throat> So continuing to look just to see if there's anybody really close there who. Uh... All right. Yeah. You know what? I think that might be recent, but we'll take a look at that. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. I'm going to go with that one, Scott. <clears throat> All right. Let me go find the time on this one. And I'm going to unshare this for a momento while I do what I have to do here. That's interesting. <clears throat> yeah, now I'm going to go with the other one between those two, but I don't see some. Yeah, we're going to go on your system. Oh, okay. I see what happened. I see why. Okay. So we've got a person here who has not won a total tester online yet. <clears throat> Let me put the answer up. And then while you're looking at that answer and cogitating on it, I'm going to make some notes in my winner file so I can deal with this a little later. Uh, back channel, uh, would you please post the uh, how to claim your total tester online win whilst I get this shared and update my handy dandy little file here? <clears throat> Today is the 21st. Uh, that's just weird. <clears throat> Thank you. 121. What is going on here? Something is very wacky with one of my systems, but 121 of 22 drama TTO. I'll figure that out later. Okay, so the winner, uh, process status, PS command. The PS command is a, a command that we run in Linux that shows you the processes that are running, who's running them, uh, what CPUs they're using. They're, the most important thing for most folks, the process ID number, so we can kill that process later or control it or track it or do whatever. So PowerShell is a Windows command for PS. Ever heard of a printer status command? Made that one up. And likewise, print shell. It's just a, a phrase I made up. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Scott. Got that. <sighs> All right, very good, guys. <laughs> Pumpkin spice. <laughs> Pizza sauce, of course. City of Shark. I botched my answer. I feel it was definitely print something. Oh, it was definitely process something. <laughs> Okay, so at 3.08, uh, TD Washington, sorry, I, we didn't say the winner. TD Washington, you were the winner of this one. <clears throat> oh, man, man my, uh, what a pain. Now, every now and again, YouTube does something very weird to the YouTube chat. I can't scroll up and I can't scroll down, and it's not me because I know somebody else that's happened to. Oh, well, at any rate. Uh, so TD Washington, follow the instructions posted at 3.08. You're going to send an email to me, DaveR at totalsem.com. 
in that email, in the body of the email, you will include your YouTube name, your real name, your email address, and the total tester, the exam number, not the name that you want. And I will get that submitted today. This is Friday. I do submissions on Fridays. Yeah, it wasn't about when you think you answered. It's when it turns up in our list. All right, well, I'm going to get on the project today then. It's not a long project. And uh, then we'll do another giveaway for a CompTIA to a exam voucher. That's just going to be awesome and a half. Okay, here we go. So this week's project, we're going to look at querying, querying and testing DNS in Linux. There are three utilities, and I, I mentioned some of this. This is just a little bit of review of some stuff I did last week, so I'm not going to go all into it. But there are three major utilities that are used to query DNS servers and to do testing on them. And two of them are kind of cool because they can or and or do exist in Windows. We have the NS Lookup utility. NS Lookup is a primary utility. It's built into all version of Windows. It operates in two different modes, an interactive mode or a command line mode. Uh, same is true in Linux. The, the issue here for discussion, oh, by the way, they, they look and work very, very, very similar. If you can use one, you can easily transition to the other. Uh, the trick here is not every Linux distro comes installed with NS lookup, and that includes Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, that includes two of the other distros that I use around here when I'm learning Linux Plus. Uh, in fact, there's only one that I know that, that does come with it. I'm going to show you how to deal with that in just a second. The other utility is DIG, common old Linux utility to query DNS. It is not a Windows utility. However, it has been ported and made available in a lot of different products for Windows. You can run it in the uh, there's command line versions of it. There's graphical utility versions of it. It's cool stuff. I'm not going to do anything on Lin on uh, Dig or NS Lookup today because both Mike and or I have done full presentations on those in the past. So I want to get into another utility. But first thing I want to show you, and, and this is kind of a, a review from last week, uh, and I wasn't able to show you this last week because I couldn't share things I can share today. So let me fire up, uh, connect to a Linux host. <clears throat> Almost there, coming up. Password, Raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. All right, I think this is a Linux or this is a Raspberry Pi 3 server running the current version of Linux. Now we share. There's my VNC client. I did that. That's not how we share. We share with Zoom. Share screen. Click this. And there we go. Okay, so we've got a Linux version up here. Uh, what happens if I try and run the NS lookup command? NS lookup. It says, hey, no such thing. How about dig? I didn't mean to do that. Dig. No such thing. Well, that's because it doesn't come included with the operating system. However, it's very easy to install, but there's an interesting little trick here that I want to show you. To install it, we sudo apt, or if you prefer the old way or the other way, apt get, install, and then the command, the, the name of the package that everybody puts in is DNS utils. There is actually no utility. There's no package in the repositories uh, in all the distros that I play with called DNS utils. Let me see if we can figure out what the name of it is by doing this. Ah, look at that. The following new packages will be installed. Bind 9 dash DNS utils. So if you ever try to install DNS utils and it fails, it's because it that actually points to another package called bind9-dnsutils. And that's the one that we're going to actually install. Capital Y, or Y is, is capitalized here, so I can just hit the enter key. I don't have to type in the letter Y and have it install. It's a really quick, speedy install. And when it comes up, it includes both dig and 
NSLOOKUP. Again, your distro may already have either or both of those. Probably won't have DIG. It's uncommon. But Raspberry Pi clearly does not. All right, we're all installed here. And so if you run NSLOOKUP, you'll find yourself in the interactive mode. I just type in commands. Okay, there's some information about Google. And what I want you to notice about this information is this is the DNS server that it first contacted to get information. That's my Pi server inside the house here. And then he tells me one factoid about google.com. There's a google.com box host server at 142.250.64.206. There's no help in this interactive mode. So if you wanna learn how to use NS Lookup, you gotta use the man pages on it. Man NS Lookup. And is the chart in this one? Now, nah, somewhere in the text documentation of all this, uh, it'll tell you the commands that will work in there. The other way to do it is to run it on the command line. NS Lookup. Excuse me. Google.com. And you get the same information, just not interactive. Oh, not quite. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was also an IPv6 address in both of them. Not going to get into DIG at all. We've, uh, Mike did a, a long, wonderful presentation. If I just say DIG, I do get a, uh, a thing that says, that's not how you use me. You got to type in some command line. I guess we could do one here real quick. DIG, Google.com. Oh, and that's wrong. Sorry. All right. Well, I'm not going to get into it because I want to do something much more interesting. Clear. <laughs> What I want to talk about, let me dive out of this for a moment, though. Stop share. Is a command called the host command. And what's cool about the host command is it is, in my experience, universally available in all modern distros of Linux that I have played with. Doesn't mean it's in every one of them, but it's in a lot. And I run four different distros when I'm trying things in my Linux Plus class. I got Ubuntu running. I got uh, Rocky running, which is a, a version, of, a fork of Red Hat. Uh, everything that uh, my instructor does with Red Hat and CentOS, I can do with Rocky and it all. It's identical. So <clears throat> that's good stuff. Sorry, reading notes here. But in all four of them, got multiple versions of RPI OS, the host command works. And let me get, oh, so. Why do I want to do DNS queries? Well, they serve two purposes. They satisfy my curiosity about resources and their DNS properties. And more, more commonly, maybe I don't, let's talk about commonality, probably not. They are great tools for troubleshooting access or non-access and function or non-function function to various DNS registered resources and to the DNS system itself. All right, that's all my notes that I just presented on DIG and NS Lookup. I got a lot of notes on NS Lookup and tutorials and things like that. If you want that stuff, download from pyrsquare.zapto.org and you'll get some really good stuff if you're interested in that. And, and all, all the same stuff, all the information in there about the Linux version of NS Lookup works for the Microsoft Windows version as well. Okay, so what I want to talk about is the host command. And I got to admit that when I think of DNS query utilities, I always think of NS Lookup or DIG. And why? Because those are the ones that are in the CompTIA exams that we've always taught, the A+, the Net+, the Security+. And so uh, if I do a DNS query when I'm in Linux, I do NS Lookup or DIG. And so... I'm sorry to confess that until recently, I didn't know about the host command. It's something that I got from my Linux Plus course. I learned it from there. And you know, I was dazed and confused for two days as I tried it in all the different versions and all the different command lines. And it's really cool. It's, it's a nice in-between. It doesn't have all of the awesome features built into NS Lookup. It doesn't have some of the features of dig, but it has others. 
it's a it's a perfect utility. It's one of those utilities that has what 99% of people need and no more. It provides the information that 99% of people need and no more. And for that reason, it's a small program. It's very light. It's very fast. It doesn't have a ton of command line switches. And if you need some of those additional powerful features, then you drop back and play with dig or with NS lookup. <clears throat> okay, so let's dive back into our shared host here <clears throat> and explore the host utility. <clears throat> Share. <clears throat> poor, poor planning on my part. I should have done a hard copy of this so I have something to, to walk on. So first of all, help is old. Old enough that it's so old, it doesn't even have help. So if I want to figure out how to use a command normally, I might say something like NS lookup minus minus help. And that works on zillions of other commands. It'll work on host, but not because there's a help flag. It says, uh, if you ever use the host command wrong, it just puts up its own built-in help. And one of the ways to use it wrong is to just run help host is to just run the command without anything else on the command line. It says, well, here's how you use me. So the basic usage for this thing is to simply say host followed by the name of the, the host that I want to do research on in DNS. So we'll use google.com again. And holy Hannah, look at the difference between what we see here and what we see running NS lookup and what we would have seen if we ran dig. This is every google.com entry in the DNS system. They've got multiple servers uh, on IPv4. They got multiple servers on IPv6. They've got mail servers that are run by Google. So I get a lot more information here. And if I want even more, I want to know what DNS knows about this thing. I can add the minus lowercase v for verbose. Give me more information. So I can see that there's A records for the IPv4, because that's what IPv4 are. And there's quad A records for the IPv6s. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I can see opcodes for them. Lots of other, excuse me. <laughs> information in there somewhere in here is a uh, is a start of authority for each and every one of those things and so i could go look for those or hey wouldn't it be kind of useful if i could uh, just go filter out and see what i want to see sure how about minus c minus c means compare the soa records of any and all entries in the, the domain for this or in the DNS for this domain. It's capital C. Okay, so there we've got four SOAs. Makes sense. There's four DNS servers. We don't know that yet, but there's four DNS servers that are controlling and managing the various DNS aspects for google.com. They look the same, but what we're seeing here is comparisons, not if they were different, we'd see more information about the different ones. Okay, hang on, looking for something. Got to see the order that I'm doing this stuff in. That was the minus C. All right, here's a command that probably won't work. Be well, let's just show it, and then we'll talk about what it is. How about host minus lowercase l on a domain? And what it'll do, what it's supposed to do, is go check DNS for every possible entry that has, in this instance, a google.com extension. So if there's a, a host out there that's fred at google.com or fred.google.com or Sally or Timmy or Desweds or whatever, uh, L is making a request of the DS ser DNS servers to show that. And the DNS servers say, are you kidding? What a security hole that is in the year 2022. We're not responding to that. Most DNS servers do have that turned off. But if you build your own DNS server in-house and you want to leave that on just because you want to do some experimenting or make that information available for reasons that are beyond me to the outside world, you could do that and this command would work with it. Now, built into the command is an assumption that DNS servers we're using 
operate on port 53, the default port for DNS. But let's say you build a DNS server for experimental purposes, your own lab, and you don't want it to get messed up with the rest of the world's uh, DNS server. So you set it up with an alternative port. Well, let me show you something here. How about, here's what's built into it. This is, there's the port command and it defaults to 53. So what I'm doing is forcing it to do what it already does anyways. Run the host command, contact DNS servers on port 53 and research google.com. And it looks just like doing host google.com without that P53. But what if I set up a DNS server that runs on port 54? Well, the only way to access it is, <laughs> I'm glad you're liking that, JR. <laughs> Well, now it's going to try and try and try. There is no DNS server out there that I've got access to that's running on port 54. So eventually, this will quit. There it goes. It quit. And I'm going to show you how to deal with that, too. What if I know I got one out there? It just takes a long time to respond. Sorry. There's back channel messages popped up here, and but they have nothing to do with us. So <clears throat> ignoring. All right, that's the alternative ports. <clears throat> now, here's an interesting thing that's going on here. We're more than halfway through this, by the way. <clears throat> when this does a DNS query, the first server that it contacts is my pie hole here in-house, 192.168.1.201. I don't care if you know that. It's on this side of my NAT router, and it's not available to the outside world. And that server, in turn, is contacting some server that knows about .com, and it's contacting a server that knows about Google.com, and then we're finding a DNS server in that realm that gives me in this information. All of that stuff is called a recursive search. Well, I want to know what my DNS server knows about Google.com, that it's cached up over time. So I can tell it, don't do recursive searches just answer me directly. Minus lowercase r is don't do recursives. And this is the information that my DNS server has cached up about Google servers over last whatever period that that server is scheduled to, to know and contain things for. So it knows about the primary Google server at 142, 250. All those other ones are load balance servers. And it knows about some IPv6 versions. That's cool. So your results are going to vary. By default, excuse me, DNS uses UDP, not a reliable transport user datagram protocol. How about we force it to use TCP? Most DNS servers have the ability to communicate. Okay, excuse me, with TCP IP, with TCP, and then we get a more reliable connection. In theory, it's a little slower, but minus capital T will give me communication via TCP. So if UDP is not working, then I can force it to try TCP, or you can do it the other way around. I want to make sure that it's only communicating with me on UDP. All right. Now, how about UDP is taking a long time? Or worse, I'm losing UDP packets. Well, in that case, I can say send multiple UDP packets by adding the minus R and a number. And this says for every UDP packet that you would normally send out, resend, send it five times. Now, all my UDPs worked up here just fine, so we're not going to see any difference. But if I had lost packets, oops, 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 oops. No, I was right about that. Minus U, R5. Oh, okay. Only get responses in that one from the mail servers. That's weird because I did this one earlier today as a test, and uh, everything came up just shiny. So why we're not seeing... Uh, the, what the IP6s must say, look, I'm not going to do UDP. 
I don't know, something odd and unusual about it that changed since I did this six hours ago. <laughs> we saw earlier that the minus V gives us verbose output. Oh, you know what? I want to do that, that one again with minus V. Let's add one more flag to this. Minus V. I didn't try this in the past. <laughs> okay, the same output that we just got up here, but verbose. <clears throat> All right, let's do... Uh, we saw earlier minus V gives us verbose output. How about minus capital V? That tells you what version of the host command you're, you're using in case you wound up copying the wrong version of it because of a different distro that you had. So this is version 916.22 specifically made for Raspbian, uh, what's, what they used to call Raspbian OS, it's Raspberry Pi OS now. It's taken a long time for my responses to come back and I don't want it to do that. And, and when it does, uh, once it times out, it quits. So here's something I can do. I know that there's a DNS server out there. Maybe it's offline for the moment. Uh, I'm on the phone with somebody over there and he's asking me to help test it with. She's asking me to help test it with. And so I, we want to know when it's going to uh, achieve connection. So he's he or she's out there poking in uh, ethernet cables and doing whatever. So he tells me to, to run a host command on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the W to let's make up a, uh, a domain that doesn't exist. Total cheese, and we'll spell it wrong, dot com. Well, the lower, <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> okay, port 54. Google.com. So we, we did this one before with port 54 and eventually it timed out and hung up. It will not time out and hang up on this one because of the minus W, it will wait forever until it either gets a response or until I kill it with control C. And then there's a mix between the two. How about minus capital W and a time limit in seconds. So now we're saying call up google.com uh, and look for it in DNS port 54. And if you don't get, wait for 20 seconds, if you don't get a response within 20 seconds, let's make it 15 and we can do that whole demo here, then give up. Oh, yeah, there we go. Trying and trying and trying as well. You can't see it cycling, but it's continuing to cycle here. So after 15 seconds, we'll pretend it happened. He gives up. There's a few more switches. That's 90% of them. There's some switches that are combinations of different and multiple switches. Oh, I guess I wanted to show you two more. Uh, we did this one, host google.com. Now I've lost all of the cool ones. We got to clear the DNS cache. I don't know how to clear DNS cache in Windows or in here. That's all right. Let's try it this way. Uh, that won't work. Well, let's say we were getting all of that stuff with all the IPv6s again. And, oh, you know what? I'll bet I'm, I'm being shut out by Google. They're probably watching my IP address saying, why is this guy querying us so many times? Let's kill that IP address. And I'm sure it was an automated process. But let's say I only want to see the IPv6 addresses and not the IPv4 addresses. Simple enough. By default, it shows both, but we can say minus six only. And eventually, <laughs> I may be totally closed out of here now. And let's try another one. How about a different domain? And you're gonna go forever. And I don't even know if we have a six address on there. There we go. So there's the fours only. It had, and it still gave me an IPv6 address. So something a little funky about it, but that's all of, or most of it. And that is the host command 
in a fairly large nutshell. Did I do all that and you didn't see any of it because I didn't share? God, what an idiot. I'm going to show you those real quick. I'm going to speed through these. Sorry about that. My back channel went away and nobody gave me a warning and I can't see the, the YouTube feed while I'm doing this. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to slam a couple of these just so you can see some of the critical ones. God, what an idiot. <clears throat> All right. So host minus C, start of authority on google.com. I only want to see it in UDP. There's everything. So I got fours, I got sixes in here. How about I only want to see it in TCP? And now let's add, I only want to see the minus, uh, the uh, IPV4s out of that list. It doesn't filter it. It's supposed to filter, that's what minus four is supposed to do. Same thing for minus six. It's what the documentation says. <clears throat> oh, well. Uh, what was the other good ones? There was the weights. And the ports, minus P. Port 54, wait for it. Computer crashed, you're back, okay. Bad time for your crash because nobody knew that I wasn't showing them anything. I didn't know. Okay, so that'll wait forever for a Google DNS server to respond on port 54. Unless we say, I'd like you to wait please for 15 seconds, 16 seconds. <clears throat> and then after 16 seconds, this will crash out. All right, I'm sorry I, I, I didn't show that well, <laughs> but it's in the documentation. Everything that I've done here, just download my stuff from pyrsquare.zapto.org and you'll see each and every one of these things. You can follow along on the video as, as you hear what I'm saying and you're in bits. So we looked at the host command, comes standard with most Linux distros, everyone that I've personally experienced in the last couple of years. It's used to test and query DNS servers and DNS domains. It's powerful, it's flexible, it's a small program, it's lightweight, it's fast. And we looked at almost every command line flag. So play with this one, it's a really great utility. Seven minutes past, let me check for critical questions and then we'll do... <clears throat> Another contest. Oh, good, not too much happened there. Maybe you did get to see that. I don't see anybody in here that's saying, we can't see you, Rush, so maybe that was up there. Host illegal option, minus P. So not dash dash P, it's minus P space, and then a port number that you wanna list it on. <clears throat> and you, uh, we're not, you. No, sorry, there's, Multiple conversations going away here. <clears throat> Got my terminal ready to go, TD Washington. I haven't learned a lick of Linux, but I used to use Unix on my job. Yeah, same commands. Remember, Linux is a, uh, a what they call a clean room copy of Unix. Okay, lots of people are stepping away. That's cool. Danny Tom, I had to install DNS util to get it, right. Oh, to get host, that's interesting. Which uh, distro are you using, Danny Tom? Darn right, sharing is caring. I almost always say that when I say I'm going to share with everybody, and I decided to skip that today. I don't have Linux. Can I use Ubuntu to follow along? Yeah, Ubuntu is Linux. It's a flavor. It's a distro of Linux. Uh, Danny's got Red Hat. Okay, Red Hat comes with a lot less utilities than others because they're uh, very security conscious. Mint, that's a Debian one with a uh, the Mint interface and Raspbian. So Mint should work out of the box. What's the URL again? Can someone type it in? The URL again for what? Danny Thomas. Oh, pi r square. Oh, uh, yeah, pi r. Okay. Andrew, Andrew Hutz posted that at 323. Looks like my version of host doesn't have some of those flags. Yeah, apparently neither does mine, even though they were documented in there. So 
Post 9.11. Okay, so with slightly different revs. You have old Raspian. Okay. Uh, game time I had to run. Lawn is mode. I could hear the demo. Somali, IP config slash flush DNS. Yeah, if that was Windows, but not Linux. Okay, good. I did share the screen. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, we're caught up then on questions. It is time for another contest. I'm going to need help, Andrew, if you're still there, I hope because Scott had to step away. So we're going to do a contest for a CompTIA exam voucher. This voucher is good for any CompTIA exam except CYSA. I'm trying to get some confirmation on if and when that has changed, but for now, okay, very good. Thank you, Back Channel. Uh, for now, no CYSA. I do have one person who's trying to get it, and I'm trying to work with uh, CompTIA to see if that will make that happen. The world holds its collective breath, and if not, I shouldn't have let it go through, but my well, we're getting it fixed. Uh, winner is going to send an email to me with some very specific and a lot of information. CompTIA needs this in order to create your voucher. So don't miss anything. Don't shortcut anything. At the end of the contest, when we've named the winner, uh, Andrew's going to post the instructions on exactly what you need to do. Copy and paste that off of the uh, YouTube chat. I'll post it as a screenshot up here. You can pause your screen and do that. Um, if it's not complete, I'm just going to send you back a message that says in incomplete and identify the piece of information that you're missing. And you have to send me a complete full new email with all the information that I need because CompTIA won't accept partials. Oh, they got I got part of it in this mail and I got part of it in this mail. Now nah, they want one record. Okay. Uh, send the information. So if you get that to me today, in fact, get that to me today because I have to send them in batches from the winners all week. I send them when the last one comes in on Friday. I've got all the winners from earlier this week from Mike's show. So we need yours. If you're winning today, you are the one who is controlling when they all go. Let's see. I, uh, oh, yeah, I was going to do a, a question on this one. I decided to do the random number thing again on this one. It's a different range than last week. So what I'm going to do, if you haven't been through this before, is I'm going to give you a range uh, of numbers from this number to that number, and you're going to post a guess uh, for a number between those ones. I used a random number generator. Uh, it's called uh, randomnumbergenerator.com to generate my random number, and it's going to be the person closest to, without going over, will win. Conditions. If you've won a voucher in the past, you cannot win another one. You, same for uh, if you want it on Mike's show, if you want it on my show, you can't win another voucher. There'll come a time when we start issuing uh, vouchers multiple times, but that ship is not here yet. It's okay if you've won total tester in the past. You can also win a voucher. In fact, you can win multiple total testers. We have done that in the past and we will do that in the future. I will also allow you, because we don't have a ton of people here, to submit up to five guesses. They must be on a separate post. Okay, and I want to see one comma two comma three comma four comma five in a post. Five different posts. And first one closest to without going over wins. There we go. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Here's the contest. Give me a number. Wow, I almost read that out loud. Between 5,000 and 10,000. And that's inclusive. And that's it. Post your guess, random number. I do this because I want to have everybody have a chance. I don't want to ask an A-plus question. I don't know anything about A-plus. I can't participate. I don't have a chance. I understand that. So everybody has a chance at coming up with a random number. <clears throat> and back channel, back uh, the uh, random number was up on top uh, of, of the back channel thread for today. <clears throat> and let's look at who's posting what and start figuring out our closest winner. <clears throat> Come on, there we go. Okay, I see some numbers starting to turn up here. <laughs> Not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the offers to help. Who are you asking if ever free to a possible phone call? Uh, Visionary versus light. Uh, contact me via email. I am Dave R, all one word, at totalsem.com. Uh, if you're looking to have a phone call with me or if you want to talk with Mike personally, 
Michael M at totalsem.com or, or Scott or Scott J or Andrew H. And uh, we'll see if that's appropriate. Sometimes we can do phone calls. Sometimes we can. All depends on what's up. <clears throat> May not arrive until 2025. Okay, I'm finally getting into uh, numbers here. So I just go through and I'm looking for, oh, there's a new name who's got a, has the win so far. <clears throat> That's right, old timers. If you're an old timer here, <clears throat> and <laughs> based on what I just said, you haven't won yet. But That's all right. There may be a closer number. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, that is not a winner. What's the winner so far? This one. <clears throat> wow, that might be interesting. No, 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 no. Lots of no's here. Visionary versus late. You weren't listening. You got to do five different posts. I can't accept that entry where you did all of your numbers on a single command line. That I, I am ignoring that entry. Uh, what was this number? Oh, you come on. Don't do your little thing here. I got to write these down so I can start tracking. <clears throat> back channel, are you studying with me here? Because back channel, study with me here. Let me know who you think has it. I, I think we got a, a winner, but I'm concerned that that was also a previous winner. So I got to look into that. <clears throat> there is a closer number. That channel, tell me the time mark that you're seeing there. Oh, wait a minute. I just ran into it. Yeah, that's the one that I just wrote down. Never mind. I am in agreement with you. All right, we're going to close this off in 10 seconds. The last entry. Uh, Andrew, would you post my email address for Visionary Versalite to get that? <laughs> Andrew, that's a... Like, somebody missed the obvious one, Andrew. 8675309. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a winner. The last entry that I have on my screen that I'm going to accept is the one from Kino M2. Sorry, you're not the winner. Uh, the winning number is 8097, 8097, and that is definitely a new name for the winners. I don't have to look that one up. Huzzah at time mark, 343 my time, JD and Sam, oh, that, 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 didn't, that was, it wasn't that one. Uh, it was 8001, and I know it was JD and Sam Gunter, there it is. JD and Sam Gunter at eight uh, at three forty four. <clears throat> uh, you won. Andrew's going to post a, uh, a how to make your claim while I make notes in my handy dandy little files here that says <clears throat> who won, what, when. <clears throat> okay. Uh, JD and Sam Gunter check time mark three forty seven for Andrew's post. And you will see exactly what and how to make this claim. I'm going to put my version of that up in just a moment. All right, now I get this up and my files are saved. Save that, do this, click that, touch this. That's your winner right here. <clears throat> and we share this screen using this utility. And then it's 48. We got about 12 more minutes after the show to catch up on questions. So that'll be cool. All right. To claim your win, you're going to send an email to me, Dave R at totalsem.com. In the bodily of that bodily, in the body of that email, you're going to include your YouTube name, JD and Sam Gunter, your actual name, that's the winner's name, your actual email address that you want CompTIA to have, or if they already have an email address for you, give me that same one, same for your name, which exam you want to take. You have to be specific. You got to list the exam number, not the name, because there are some exams out there that have the same name. So 220-1001 or N10-1007, sorry, 
Yeah, that's right. Or N10008, whatever the number is. The country where you intend to take your exam. And it, and that means if you what if you're gonna do that at home, doesn't matter the country at home. And if the country is in the US, you must also include the state where you're gonna take your exam. If you're already registered with CompTIA, use the same name and email that you are registered under. All right, congratulations to JD and Sam Gunter. Way to go. <clears throat> Any voucher, anywhere in the world that they offer exams. I might not have mentioned that. <laughs> Tullow it in binary. One, 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 one. I know that one. Uh, okay, so we get past these things. If I missed a question, if you posted a question I didn't answer before all these answers came in, uh, post it again. I am picking it up at 346 right now. Told it. I actually put 8309. Okay. Well, it was <laughs> so close. You had all the digits in there. It's like getting wrong lottery number, right? <laughs> all right. Well, I've caught up on questions then too. So post questions. In the meantime, I'm going to check my notes. I do have a couple of other things that I can get out of the way right now. And if no more questions come up, then we'll uh, let it go. We'll close down a little bit oily. Nothing wrong with that. We got 10 minutes left here. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Oh, I should have taken that out. Upcoming episodes. So we're done with DNS. That was fun. It was interesting. Uh, I got lots of upcoming episodes, but in the short term, uh, in the next two weeks, I'm going to do cacti. Uh, this coming Friday, next week, we're going to do how to install it. And then the following week, we're going to do how to use it. What is cacti? Well, Cacti is called a network management and monitoring tool, but not network packets, although that's supported too. Uh, his job is to monitor processes that are going on in your network. It monitors your websites. It monitors SNMP. It monitors lots of things like that. It can generate reports. You can read them regularly. Uh, it's a really simple install, except the initial instructions that I got had some problems and somewhere I even made a, a mistake in there, but uh, I've got them all ironed out. It's, it's nice and clean. It's not too long to do this install. However, one of the steps is one of the steps quite literally takes between 20 and 25 minutes. So I'm going to give you the steps and I'm going to repeat some of the steps live and, and online, but you know, we kind of, we're not going to do that step because otherwise we'll just sit here and fold arms for 20 minutes and talk about, the latest knitting thing that I've done today. So we'll get that installed on this Friday and then the following Friday or this coming Friday and then the following Friday, I'm gonna show you some of the things how to use it. Why, Dave? I'm glad you asked that question because this is one of the big three utilities that are used to manage and monitor networks from home networks with one host in it to enterprise networks with tens of thousands of servers. You, you're going to presume that if you're monitoring 10,000 servers out there, you need to run cacti distributed and on some pretty powerful machines. But for most of the environments that most of us are playing in right now, if you want to do something to experiment with, uh, doing cacti on a Raspberry Pi uh, will easily manage a couple dozen different servers. After that, I'll be working in the back uh, around learning Nessus 10. If you have a pen testing uh, interest in your future career in hobbying or whatever. Nessus 10 is one of the really, really important tools. Uh, and they have a version for Raspberry Pi. They've created a special version just for uh, us to do the class with. Normally, uh, you can go down and get the freebie one anytime you want. It's good for 30 days. Uh, and I, I was just not satisfied that I would ha have sufficient time in 30 days to learn it to create a course around it and to present it. So they've agreed to make a special version uh, just for this class. Those for me uh, and mine's going to expire too. I can't get the uh, any better than the free one. They're not offering me any special details on the real phone version, but uh, don't, don't get it and install it until after you've seen the show so that you'll be able to maximize your 30 days when you do get it. It would be my recommendation. Upcoming this week on Monday with Mike's show. Mike, you may have heard, lost his voice for the his most recent Wednesday show. Scott and I tried to fill in for the big shoes. We didn't do a presentation. We just answered Q&A. 
and talked about life in general is a good time show and mike is absolutely fine and functional he just lost his voice so he poked in on the chat channel and had a little fun with us and at us and that was great so presuming his voice has plenty of time to recover he's got all of, of the rest of this week and the weekend he plans on uh, doing his show on monday and continuing his presentation on building a routing lab using virtual machines now if you didn't catch his show on monday and you want to learn how to do uh building routing labs on his monday show he laid out uh, some of the foundations the list of the software that you need to download so you can do this uh without buying any additional hardware you're going to run vms so this is a very very cool thing and i have not seen this done in the past i know he's trying to use this as a, a new teaching and learning technique I am learning it same as you are uh, in case I can use it for my own stand-up classes that Total sends me out on. All right, let's see what popped up, if anything, to close things out. <sighs> okay, question. There we go. Reading messages. Patricia Grace. I never did say hi, Patricia Grace. Hi, Patricia Grace. Hope you can... Uh, I hope you're, everything is going doing better in, in your neck of the woods. Uh, you were not feeling well and, and I think joined the club uh, a week or so ago. <laughs> Dang, meant 5309. Oh, well, we'll do this retroactively now. Waiting for somebody to uh, put in 80, whatever I had, 8039 or what, <laughs> right about now. Uh, Andrew Hutz, Nessus is amazing. We should be able, we should all be thrilled that they finally added an ARM version. Absolutely. And wishing a quick recovery for Professor Mike Myers. Yes, we all wish that. I haven't heard from him since Wednesday, um, which I take to be a good sign. If anything bad happens, somebody at the company would call us and let us know. And uh, Mike is, is communicated with the people that he's working on day to day projects. Uh, I'm not doing anything specific with him. I tend to work mostly with Scott and with you guys and with the uh, forums that we support. Oh, and some other people. I'm going to be in the office next week. Scott's going to be in the office next week. We have a, a, a class that we're going to put on the road in uh, Virginia in two weeks. So Scott and I are going to go into uh, the office next week and get all of our equipment packed up and ready to ship. And I got a dead motherboard there that uh, is irreparable. So... <laughs> it's irreparable let's just go with that and so is the cpu that came with it somebody uh, boogered up the socket and it in turn bo or boogered up the cpu but the two got boogered up together and uh, the project the problem got worse the the cpu we didn't know the the cpu was damaged we thought it was just the socket maybe from somebody poking around in there or lifting things so we took the cpu and put it in another motherboard and that destroyed the socket on the new motherboard so we put everything away we ordered a new motherboard we ordered a new cpu and we're going to just rebuild from scratch how disappointing is that huh let's just throw money away but there it is a wee bit better, huh, Patricia? All right. I know you weren't cheating. Of course not. I wouldn't do it. I would, I would do anything for puns. I, I, I considered that one. <laughs> but I won't do that. Shame on you. How can I go about learning Ninja RMM? Does anybody know anything about Ninja RMM? I know nothing. I have never heard of I've heard of Ninja stuff lately, but I don't know Ninja RMM. So I'm going to open that up for the next one minute while I get ready to do the final close down of here. Um, here's the answer. Visionary versatile. Uh, Andrew, let's one final time throw the Discord link up. Join us on Discord. We got lots and lots of people with lots and lots of expertise. I'll be able to do some research on it. And together we will find out if you don't join us on the Discord channel, the link's about to be posted. Uh, start the usual way. How do I learn about Ninja RMM on your favorite search engine? Google, Quant, DuckDuckGo, whatever makes you happy. I'm not sure. Andrew, okay, I see him typing in the back channel. There we go. Just posted the new Discord channel. So if you will join us there, we have lots and lots of experts who can help you. And I'm sure we got people there who know something about Ninja RMM. And you have me intrigued. I will certainly be looking it up myself.
just to learn what you're talking about, all right? Well, all right. We've spent two wonderful hours together. It's been a lot of fun as ever and always. What are you doing there? There we go. Uh, so I'd like to thank everybody, Mike Myers, for letting us have this time to get together. Uh, Scott Jernigan, excuse me, <clears throat> cleaning up my throat one more time. Andrew Hutz, yeoman service as always. And thanks for hanging out and, and totally covering for Scott. I didn't know Scott was going to have to split. So, so much the better that you were here. Thank you very much. I am, and this has been Dave Rush. I'm the senior instructor at Total Seminars and resident pie specialist. I'm wishing you a great weekend. Take care of each other, take care of yourselves, and take good steps to stay healthy. Call and visit your parents and the rest of your family. And never forget, technology is great, but the greatest resource we have are you and I. And with that, good night. I'll see you on Discord. I'll be there in five to 10 minutes. See you at the AMAs next week. And until then, I am out of here. This presentation was recorded before a live audience and is a production of Total Seminars. I don't have to say that. I just think it's fun. Bye-bye. <laughs>